I am disappointed. In what way are you disappointed? I'm disappointed that we could not proceed as, with the court order as uh, entered by Judge Matt Taylor. What portions of Judge Taylor's original order remain in effect today? Well, now, he stayed on his own motion, I think, on August the 9th, that portion that he had decreed over and above what the board had suggested. The uh, stay of the Fifth Circuit now of the elementary TV, uh, I cannot tell you exactly how full or how much would be stayed in, in that order until I see it or until our attorney is counseling and advised with it. But it leaves in effect, uh, I know the, the teachers, according to the Singleton plan, that is, 25% black teachers in all schools and 75% white teachers in all schools. It leaves in effect the creation and the appointment of the triathlete committee. It leaves in effect the selection of any future sites and building program. These, I know, are still in full force and effect. I am sure, but I would have to check with the administration and with the court order to make sure about the satelliting of the uh, black students to the four white high schools and junior high. What Mr. Hammond wants to do is that he has asked that this legal services could withdraw from, as, as representing plaintiffs in the desegregation case. I hope that's not an indication of what he's, you know, of what the legal services project is going to be about this year. The job of the legal services project is to represent poor folks and represent them as well and as hard and as effectively as it can. And that oftentimes means drawing a lot of political pressure from a non-client community, that means other than people who are poor and eligible for legal services. So the effective program will, will make some changes, hopefully, in the legal system affecting poor people. It is not there to represent middle-class white people. It is there to represent poor folks, and oftentimes their views are in contrast with the non-client community. I'm appealing to all of the anti-busing groups in Dallas to join me in Fort Worth and get on the telephone and call their people to attend this rally. Is this going to result in another censure move against you by the council? Well, I suspect not. I think the uh, council uh, realizes that I have said nothing illegal. Uh, there's no federal law that says any child must uh, or can be forced to set foot on a bus, and this is what I said. Are you, Mr. Price, using a politically hot issue to pave your way to Congress? No, I think the uh, reverse is true. The normal political tack would have been to remain silent on such a controversial issue, uh, as uh, most of the council tried to do uh, on this thing. And uh, uh, this is a normal political for course to follow, but I chose early to speak out on it and uh, have helped organize uh, the anti-busing movement in Dallas. Well, there is division on the city council over this issue and over your stand. Would you resign? Yes, I have uh, today offered uh, to the city council to resign uh, at any time. They will call a special election to fill my vacancy. Uh, normally, uh, uh, if they refuse to do that, then I intend to uh, stay in office until February the 4th and resign at that point. As far as I know, the only people that were on that stage, and it was restricted to United States Senators and Congressmen and past Commander-in-Chiefs of the Veterans of Foreign Wars. Does not the mayor of the eighth largest city in any country qualify? Well, certainly I can't answer that question. I, I believe that he qualifies, but I'm not responsible for what happened. And again, I say I apologize. He did speak with the police chief of the city of Dallas. I'm not in a position to answer that question. I don't know that to be a fact. I've been very busy here all week with mandates and resolutions and traveling all over this convention. And I was not part of that committee for the head table. I, I, I mean, the stage at the, or the, whatever you call it, the auditorium here in, in, in Dallas.
Mr. Carroll, why do the rebel rousers want to sell this fire engine? Well, the rebel rousers must disband now with the change in theme. There cannot be any longer be any rebel rousers. And the, the club is going to disband, and in order to settle our business in an orderly fashion, we must sell the truck to cover a $1,200 debt that the club has incurred at the, at the local bank. Has there been a drop in spirit of the rebel rousers since they have been forced to change their name? Well, I don't, within the rebel rousers itself, I think the spirit of, of the individuals has diminished quite a bit. Some of them went down with the ship, so to speak. Well, let's see if the truck really does run, Mr. Terrell. Give us a little demonstration, All if you right, would. Fine. This is a 1935 model, General Motors. It runs pretty good. It can be classified as an antique. If anyone has $1,200, if they'd like to pay for the truck, Certainly, the truck may be worth several thousand dollars. This is Jim Green, WFAA News in Arlington.